Hi everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology and in this video I'll be going through all the key marking points and all the concepts linked to the cardiac cycle and not only that at the end I'm going to be going through a worked example with one of the questions where you have a graph and then the maths linked to it as well because I know that's the type of question that many of you find really difficult. Now linked to the idea of the key marking points if this is something that you struggle to either identify or to remember then why not check out my flashcards because I've been teaching you for over 14 years I know all the key marking points off by heart so I put them into a set of flashcards I'll link those in the description below so if you do want to get the flashcards linked to this topic and to the entire A level then they're just there for you but for now let's get into the cardiac cycle so in the last video we went through the structures of the heart looking at the structure and the function of the four chambers the four major blood vessels and the valves and in, of particular importance for this video will be the valves and the thickness of the muscular walls. So the cardiac cycle is looking at the pressure and the volume changes within the heart, how that controls the opening and closing of the valves and how the valves make sure that the blood flows in one direction. I'm going to split it into these three key stages, diastole, atrial systole, and ventricular systole. Now I do want to point out at this stage that these two terms are pronounced differently by so many people. So I say diastole, some people say distally. I say um, systole, some people say systole. So diastole, distally, systole, systole, whichever your teacher says, whichever you say, I'm gonna pronounce it that way, pronounce it how you like, as long as you spell it correctly, then both are accepted. So diastole, um, at this stage, we're gonna begin here on the diagram and the inner circle is showing you what's happening to the atria and the outer circle is showing what's happening to the ventricles. Diastole means relaxing. So if the atria and ventricles are in diastole, that means both of those muscles are relaxing. Systole means contracting. So we can see at this stage in the diagram, the atria are contracting. And at this stage in the diagram, the ventricles are contracting. So we're gonna go through each of those stages in more detail. So we're starting with diastole and both the atria and the ventricles are relaxing or in diastole at this stage. So because the muscular wall, the muscles are relaxing, we've got a larger volume and blood will flow into the atria during diastole. So we've got here atria and ventricular muscles are relaxed, the blood will enter. Uh, because the blood's entering, the pressure will start to rise as you are pouring in more and more liquid into that small space. So that is our diastole. Atrial systole, so we're now onto this stage in the diagram. So the ventricles at this point are still in diastole. So the ventricles are still relaxed, but now we can see that the atria contract or they're in systole. And that's what we're shown in this diagram here where the darker purple is. So the atria start to contract. As they contract, that decreases the volume of the atria. And if the volume decreases, increases the pressure will increase and that increase in pressure behind the atrioventricular valves forces open the atrioventricular valves and so blood starts to pour into the ventricles in atrial systole the next stage is our ventricular systole so this darker green section. And at this point, that means the ventricles are contracting. So there's a short delay before that happens. And then the ventricles start to contract from the bottom upwards. And as those ventricles contract, they've got a really thick muscular wall. So you get a big contraction that causes a decrease in the volume of the ventricles. And because the volume decreases, we get a big, big increase in the pressure. So we have a really high pressure in the ventricles that forces the atrioventricular valves shut and the semilunar valves open. So as a result, the blood moves from the ventricles up through the pulmonary artery and the aorta. So that is what causes the semilunar valves to open and the blood to leave the heart. And then we get back to the beginning of the cycle, then all of the muscle relaxes, so the blood will then re-enter through the atria. So that's the cardiac cycle. The cardiac output is a math skill which is linked to this. So you can work out the volume of the blood which is gonna leave one of the ventricles in one minute. And that's what the cardiac output is. And the way you calculate it is heart rate times stroke volume. And the heart rate is how many times your heart beats within one minute. The stroke volume is the volume of blood which leaves the heart every beat. 
So you could be asked to work that out. Now the valves play a key role in the cardiac cycle. They are controlling that the blood flows in one direction or unidirectional flow. The blood doesn't flow back into the atria. So just a recap on the valves. There's two sets. We have the semilunar and the atrioventricular valves. Semilunar are the ones that are found between the ventricles and the arteries. So you have them in the aorta and the pulmonary artery. Atrioventricular valves are, as the name suggests, they're found between the atria and the ventricles. Sometimes they're called bicuspid and tricuspid, and that's referring to how many flaps they're made of. So bicuspid, we can see two flaps. Tricuspid, there are three flaps. And the valves themselves, they open when the pressure is higher behind the valve. They'll close when the pressure is higher in front. And this then prevents the backflow of blood. And we're gonna have a look at this in detail before looking at pressure change graphs. So if we think about the atrioventricular valve, first. They will open, we said, when there's a higher pressure behind compared to in front. So behind the valve is the atria. So if you have a higher pressure in the atria compared to the ventricles, that is what causes the AV valves to open. If you have a higher pressure in the ventricles compared to the atrium, that will cause the atrioventricular valves to close. Next then, the semilunar valves and what causes those valves to open. So they'll always open when there's a higher pressure behind than in front. And in this case, what's behind them is the ventricles. So if you have a really high pressure in the ventricles, so during ventricular systole, that will cause the semilunar valves to open. The semilunar valves will close, which we can see in this diagram, they're closed, when the pressure is higher in the arteries compared to the ventricles. And when I've written arteries here, that's specifically rever referring to the aorta and the pulmonary artery. So bear those facts in mind for when we now go on to interpreting the graph looking at these pressure changes. So what's a really common question linked to the cardiac cycle is for you to be given a graph similar to this without these four labels and you would then have to draw on when each of the valves opens and closes. And it's all due to this knowledge of valves open when the pressure is higher behind, they close when the pressure is in front, and then you need to be able to visualize the position of the valves so you know what is behind and what is in front. Now I've added on to mine whether the muscles are in systole or diastole. So we've got the left atrium starting in systole, then in diastole. Left ventricle at that point would start in diastole, then it contracts in systole, and then it's relaxed as well. So this is just showing us what would be happening to the pressure in the aorta, the ventricles and the atria at each of these stages in the cardiac cycle. So at the start of this graph, we're beginning with atrial systole. So the atria are contracting. That is why the pressure slightly increases. The pressure then decreases though because the blood is being pumped out of the atria. Then we go into ventricular systole and this is when the ventricles contract and this causes a much much bigger increase in pressure change and that's because the ventricles have a really really thick muscular wall compared to the muscular wall in the atria so they can contract with a greater force and generate a much higher pressure. When the blood is then pumped out of the ventricles to the rest of the body we have a slight decrease as the volume of blood blood decreases, but when the ventricles relax and therefore the volume of the chamber increases, that's what causes the big decrease in pressure. And when both the atria and ventricles are relaxed, the pressure in both chambers is very, very low. And that's why the blood will then move into the heart through the atria. So if we have a look at the four valves when they open and close, thinking about the semilunar valves first, we've said the semilunar valves are positioned here, which is between the ventricles and the arteries. Now we've only got data on this graph for the aorta and ventricles and atria. So we must be thinking about the semilunar valves then, which we can't actually see in this diagram, but it's between the left ventricle and the aorta. Behind a semilunar valve is the ventricle, in front is the aorta. So a semilunar valve will open when the pressure is higher behind it, which is in the ventricle. That is why it's at this point here where the semilunar valve first opens. When the pressure is higher in the ventricle compared to the aorta, that is when it forces the valve open. And it remains open until this point when the pressure is now higher in the aorta 
compared to in the ventricle. And that is what causes the semilunar valves to shut. Thinking about the atrioventricular valves, these are the ones that are found between the atria and the ventricles. So we have the atria in behind and the ventricles in front. So the valves will open when the pressure is higher in the atria. And the first time we see that crossing over of the atrial pressure exceeding the ventricular pressure is actually this point here. So that's the first time they cross over. So when the pressure in the atria now exceeds that in the ventricle, that is what forces open the atrial ventricular valves. The whole cycle is going on and then looping round, it's still open and they'll close at this point when we see the first crossover when the ventricular pressure exceeds that in the atria it forces the atrioventricular valves shut so that's how you'd interpret the data on this type of graph so in summary then we've got this table looking at atrial systole ventricular systole and diastole and you need to come up with a description what is happening to the volume the pressure in the atria volume and pressure in the ventricles so if you want to have a go pause now draw the table and practice if not just carry on straight through with me now. So the description, what atrial systole means is the atria are contracting. Ventricular systole, the ventricles are contracting. Diastole, both sets of chambers are relaxed. What happens to the volume then? If the atria is contracting, that means the volume will decrease. If you've got a smaller volume, that increases the pressure. Now at this stage, that does actually result in an increased volume in the ventricles and a slight decrease in pressure because of that. Ventricular systole, the ventricles ventricles are contracting. Now that actually has no impact on the atria at all, but it will have a big impact on the ventricles. So that large contraction causes a large decrease in the volume of the ventricles and therefore a large increase in the pressure of the ventricles. So lastly, when both sets of chambers are relaxing, because they're relaxed, that will result in an increase in the volume. Now the reason the pressure actually starts to increase in the atria at this point is because the volume's larger, blood will start to flow into the atria, and that's what causes the increase in the pressure. The volume of the ventricles, there's a slow increase in both the ventricle volume and pressure, and that's because as the blood starts to flow into the atria, it will actually then start to trickle down into the ventricles as well, and that's why there's this slow increase in volume and the pressure. So in summary, the cardiac cycle is made up of three stages, diastole, atrial systole and ventricular systole. The pressure and volume changes within each chamber of the heart is what causes the valves to open and close and that ensures blood flows in one direction or it's unidirectional. And those pressure and volume changes can be represented on the graph so that you can identify when the valves are open or closed. So that's all the theory that you need to know about the cardiac cycle. Now I'm gonna show you one of the TikToks I did where I went through a graph question for the cardiac cycle. And if you want to see more exam questions like that, then head over to my TikTok because I do lots of them every day. So let's take a look at that exam question. One common maths question that comes up for A level biology is calculating the heart rate from data on a graph. Do this, look for repeating patterns, such as here I've picked out the three repeating peaks. This indicates one cardiac cycle. Read off from the graph the duration of one cardiac cycle. This example is 0.28 seconds. Heart rate is usually in beats per minute. So if one cardiac cycle is 0.28 seconds, then we need to see how many times that fits into one minute. To calculate this, you would do 60 for 60 seconds divided by the duration of one cardiac cycle. And in this example, we get 214 beats per minute. Now that is a very high heart rate, but that's because this data was taken from an example where it was a dog and the dog was doing exercise. Always consider what your overall answer is though, because if you get anything ridiculously low, then it's probably gonna be wrong. So I hope you found this video helpful going through all of the theory and an exam question. And remember, if you're struggling to remember the key marking points, then try my flashcards where I've got them all summarized for you. And they're linked in the description below. That's it for today. Hopefully see you next week for some more videos to help you with your A-level biology.